Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends. And we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy because now it's time to rewind. So let's talk about our favorite scenes. We can go through the movie however you want. I'm going to throw it to you guys. Andrew, what's like one thing right off the bat that you just love about this movie? Um, I think, it, honestly, Denise Richards steals the movie for me. Um, and I'm always so sad when she gets killed off. And mm. it's just because all of her actions are just so over the top. Right from this, right from the beginning, she's in the uh, auditorium. And the f- her first line in the movie is, you know, F off to that guy that, like, oh my God, yes. touches her ribbon or whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> it just never lets up from there. It, even when she's, like, seducing Nev Campbell. Oh, There's yeah. just so many parts where she is just so iconic in this movie. I mean where that she she basically spends half the movie dripping with water you're <laughs> so right and, and um just there's that iconic shot of after uh, her friend leaves the car wash and she's made her way into Sam Lombardo's house oh, and wow. you just get this shot of her weird little jelly sandal shoes <laughs> yeah. and then it pans up and you know it's supposed to be like her sexy moment and you're just oh, like yeah. what all of a sudden the movie has changed and you're like, what movie is this? And what have I gotten myself into? Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think that she's iconic in this role. I, I don't think that anyone else at this time could have lived up to mm-hmm. that part of, of, for this. And then literally the, the scene that drives me is, is the courtroom scene. So the one that you oh, were talking about yeah. and when she launches across that courtroom and she's like, you skanky bitch. And she just like throws <laughs> the glass at Neff Campbell. Oh, I love it is, it. It is such like an over the top telenovela like type of acting, but yeah. I'm here for it because it, it it just amps up the camp factor that in some I, I feel like this movie actually is pretty uneven on how it wants to either be super campy or super serious, right. depending on what depending on what character you're with. So mm-hmm. when you're with like Kevin Bacon and the crew, it's super serious. It's a crime drama. You're trying to figure out like what's going on. But then when you're with Denise Richards, it's like to the moon and back how high she's acting um same with the mom and then when you're with like walter and his and his grandma i'm only assuming it's like a backwoods comedy and it's it's so it is a little uneven but i think like it it works so yeah those are kind of things that literally stick out to me you know how my mom's paying you off she's breaking my trust we bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Now they're getting away with $8 million of Sandra Van Ryan's money. You want my gut? There's more to this story than you know. The one scene that always, I, whenever I think about wild things, and it's not really a, like a huge thing. Well, maybe it is. Hmm. Uh, is is Nev Campbell's wig on the boat. Yes. Oh, God. Her <laughs> wig is so bad. And, it, and it's just because it's so blonde, you know? And, and, and like... Like that boat. It's got like a little like like. Yeah, it's like you can literally see her hair under the wig, right? It's so big and bouffantish, you know. Um, But it's like that boat scene. I think about, um, of course, the the threesome scene. I mean, it's classic. The pool scene where they're fighting, and then she's like, like, puts her finger to her lips. I was like, oof. Am I, you know, am I a lesbian now? You know, like, (laughs) no. Um, And then it's so funny, but it's after the movie with the credits. Oh, I love and, yeah. and anyone yeah. out there who has seen my shorts. I, you know, I love some a scene during the credits. So, and maybe I was inspired by Wild Things to keep that going. I don't know, but I love the end credits. Tell me, what do you think of all that? Does it make sense to you? Uh, what do you What do you like oh, about I, that? I kind of like. I often well, I think about like, did they always plan on showing that? Did mm-hmm. they want us to like figure it out for ourselves? Because I feel like I don't know. I can't. I, if it was made now, which by the way, this would. This would be on Lifetime now, like it would not even mm-hmm. be in the theaters, you know, it would, you know, be free. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, you know. Right. But or you never know, it could be like that 365 Netflix movie that apparently, I haven't seen it, but it's very sexual. So it could oh. be streaming and just 
be very campy, but like super duper sexual. You never know. Right. Yeah. No, I, but yeah, it's, uh, um, I wondered, yeah, I thought maybe if they never, if they, mm. what would the movie be like if they didn't have those end, end credit scenes, which I think really just really ties it ni nicely together. You know, we, you know, we wonder like, how would she fake her death? Oh, she's literally pulling her own teeth out. Oh you know? my God. Yeah. That the is scene that's just always, I'm like, Oh, so you know, yeah so good. painful to look at but also so funny how he's squirming and she's like jesus christ yeah, yeah. um what i love about the that the post or i guess the during credits um scenes is yeah it fills in the blanks like i and it also shows us because at the end and we're spoiling everything and that's how it goes but at the <laughs> end you know Susie is the one left standing out of this crazy web of of lies and so what i love about those scenes is right off the bat it shows us like how she kind of she seemed to mastermind the whole thing i assume those credit scenes are kind of in order she goes to sam with pictures of him and his student uh kelly right so that gets the ball rolling and then i think next is um uh, Susie and Sam spying on Ray Duquette, Kevin Bacon, and like how he's a dirty cop, mm -hmm. um, and how she's getting Sam to like go be his friend, and like he's gonna want to kill me. Like this was Susie's plan, I, I think. Is that what you guys got from that? That like Susie kind of was a mastermind. Yeah, for sure. I mean, right? she's Absolutely. kind of the one that goes to him with the plan in yeah. the first place. I think that they probably plan most of it together, but I think like. And there is like a, so this is what I was reading about the unrated version is that there is a deleted scene where it explains that um, Susie is actually the illegitimate half sister of Sandra, right? Is that the mom? Um, Wait, Susie is the illegitimate sis half sister to Sandra? To the mom, yeah. Right. Whoa. Then she would have been the one to inherit. To get all the money. Yeah. 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 Oh, Not Kelly. My. Yeah. Interesting. Whoa. Okay. So that. Okay, I did not know that. So, Andrew, you're blowing my mind a little bit. Okay. I mean, it does help understand her why she's like a. Yeah. You know, there's like different. There's obviously different reasons for people to join in on the on the chaos here, mm -hmm. um, and I it, I think it gives her a little bit more reason to, about like the money mm -hmm. portion of the plan. Yeah. Um, like I get the revenge portion of her plan with Ray, and even at the end, you know, with with Matt Dillon's character, yeah. but like. I think it just gives her a little bit more uh, depth in mm -hmm. like why she's participating in this and and why she feels like she's owed this this money. So yeah, that's true. That's true. It's more of a motive, more of a connection rather than just girl from the wrong side of the tracks that that reporter calls her. I remember seeing that and be like, oh my god, you bitch. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's true. That's so interesting. I wonder if they cut that just because maybe it was too complicated i think it got too complicated yeah, yeah. Uh, yet another reveal yeah it, it's it's hard to keep them all on track um but yeah so after that i'm just thinking of the other uh credit scenes after she's with sam with ray then it's the the tooth thing then we see that moment on the beach what happened when kelly you know goes to the car to get a blanket or whatever and then we see ray and kelly in her guest house and how she did not really she did not shoot him like he told people you know he he's doing all that and then i think it ends yeah with then good old bill murray that mm -hmm. uh, attorney he's in on it oh my god when i first saw that i was like wait a minute what he's in on it and gives Susie all the money and takes out his fee and she ha and I, I do love how he says like we have a million for ruby and walter her family mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. i love that <laughs> and he says and then i took my fee out and then she gives him a kiss and walks off like oh my god so it's like Wow, it's crazy. I almost need to see like a cut that shows everything in chronological order. You know what I mean? Like, I, I wonder if a fan has made that out there. After tonight, the three of us not to be seen together again. After tonight? I was curious about how you see things working out for you and Sam and Susie. Excuse me? I mean, it's hard enough for one person to keep a secret, let alone three. Especially when two of them are in love. You don't really think Kelly and Sam are gonna share that money with you, do you? There's like one thing that's always bothered me and it's about believing what happens. Cause like when you're, when you're watching, not about Davy, but like when Nev gets, you know, killed yeah. and like you see the, the, the champagne oh bottle and the swooping yes. and it's like, yes. And then, the you know, yeah. and then, and then like you see her in the car and I'm like, that camera trick is a, they, if it had been a second, it would have been like, Oh, she's, 
what if she's she's she can't be dead like she's not dead but like they they lingered on her face behind the bag a little bit yes, too long for up. me uh -huh. where it almost seems like a like a gag you know like or, oh. like you know like it i'm like oh wait a minute like a plot hole kind of thing i'm like wait mm, interesting like, dead like i just thought it was that scene i'm like if they maybe have just not shown it like in psycho where they just he closed they closed the trunk and i'm like okay now i can believe that maybe she's alive because you didn't see her breathing or you know right. like i don't know i just yeah, that's, that's interesting. The the close up of her is definitely an interesting choice. So yeah, when you yeah. see that close up, you're you is that when you know you kind of have the feeling that she's not dead, or you feel like she's got to be dead. She's got to be dead. There's no breathing. Mm -hmm. you know, she's not. Yeah. She's not gonna fake not breathing when the trunk is you know yeah. for us the yeah. audience. Right. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. You know. Well, the other part in that scene too is where it shows like a spurt of blood, like oh, yeah. like legit like drenched blood, and I'm like, yeah. her just pulling out her front teeth is not gonna create like this. <laughs> I know. This, yes. this, right. Like, it's spurt actually, of blood. It's quite gross. Yeah. I yeah. I never really real. I knew it was blood, but like not until this latest rewatch, I was like. Okay, it, that's a spurt. That's like a geezer. Okay, enough, enough. Also, why did the bottle not break? Wouldn't you have thought the bottle would have... I mean, I don't know. You just see so many movies where the bottle, any bottle just breaks on someone's head. Right. It's weird that it never broke. I'm like, that is quite a strong champagne bottle. Well, right? I will say that it was full. Like, he never yeah. opens it. I mean, so I, I, I just imagine like a, a full champagne bottle is much more robust than more, like yeah. a, an empty Solid. one, you know? That's true. That's true. And I just love that twist that... Only about 15 minutes after the epic three-way scene with the three of them, where we realize they're all in on it. It's all this plan. I mean, what a what a brilliant way to reveal that. Insane. But Neb is the one. Susie's the one that pops the champagne bottle and then mm -hmm. starts drinking it. And then only 15 minutes later, the champagne bottle, a different one, is used to, quote-unquote, kill her, right? Leave me alone. There is no case. Get out of these people's lives. Sam, I'm really nervous. I need you to be there for me tonight. We gotta stick to the plan. There's no one to trust. And you can trust me. <laughs> she just yelled at Sam and threw stuff at him and forced his Educator of the Year award to break in public, <laughs> which I'm like, okay, young lady. Like, I just wanted some teacher to be like, all right, you need to calm down. You need to go to the principal's office. But I guess because she's a Van Ryan, <laughs> she it, gets away with it, right? Blue Bay. Blue Bay. Blue Bay. <laughs> Do not people. tell Kelly, you know, what does is, what is her mom say? My my favorite line of maybe the whole movie, but definitely Wait. from Sandra is, say it, Jeff. Do you know? My daughter does not get raped in Blue Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yes. I also love when she says uh, before, right as Kelly's going to tell her mom, which I do, I have to say, I love, you know, that close up shot of her tears in her mouth. Like I was raped. Um, but she tells her mom, you know, or she's saying like, I miss dad. And, and her mom's like, well, he didn't have to kill himself, Kelly. I know. <laughs> it's so, like, Teresa Russell is, I honestly, there must have been a second director that was like, you're just going to handle everything Teresa's doing. because She is in a different movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I love it, though. Her I and her boy it. toy. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, what's his name? Frankie. Yeah, and then yeah. she has another great line to, on the phone with Sam. And this is when we start to suspect that, like, she and Sam have a history, right? Which is confirmed later when Susie has her great, you know, monologue of truth in the courtroom that... You know, she wanted to hurt Sam and Kelly wanted to hurt Sam because she found out Sam and mom were having an affair. When she's on the phone with Sam, she goes, I haven't found anyone who can handle my boat the way you can. And she's <laughs> saying it directly to Frankie, who has just given her a great time. I mean, Frankie's Frankie looks good, you know, and I'm like, oh my she God, wasn't gosh. having it. She, she wasn't was having, having it. it. <laughs> Frankie is not Sam Lombardo, who, as the cops say, has slept with half the women in town. Right. Which yeah. going back to what you were saying, Andrew, about the the removal of the gay scene and how you are okay with not everyone so obsessed with Sam Lombardo. The movie is interesting that it's showing a little bit of, you know, when a guy has a lot of sex, he's just so appealing to everyone. The guys want to be him. The mm -hmm, girl, mm -hmm. Some guys want him. The Every woman wants him, right? Like I said, in the beginning, every student is looking at him, every mom, right? So there is something... Like, I don't know. I don't think that would be necessarily part of the movie if it was made today, where it's like, we're going to really celebrate the guy that gets a lot of sex. You know, that felt very 90s to me. Well, even just the whole idea of like making up 
that you were raped. I mean, it's like the Me Too stuff. I mean, I like, yeah. Ooh. What do you tell me more about that, Jeff? What do you think of that? Because this movie is very interesting watching it now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it's it's you know because I just reminds me of um, uh, Promise a Young Woman. You know, just mm -hmm. like that whole that whole thing. But yeah, I don't think. Yeah. I don't know. This wouldn't be. I don't know if this would be as well received and loved as it is. You know, that was made twenty years ago. I think. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good point, you know, because not only the the um, accusation of of rape when it's not true, but also I thought it was interesting. I mean, I actually I think maybe I mean, I love all the characters, but I have grown to really, really, really love Daphne Rubin Vega as Perez. She's mm -hmm. like maybe the smartest person in the whole group, even though I know sometimes she's sort of led astray. Um, but. You know, what also is a little kind of risque, especially in our 2023 lens, uh, post Me Too, is how immediately once they interview Kelly and she's talking about, you know, all the stuff and Perez, as soon as the like the video interview's done, she's like, I think she's acting. And I did think like, ooh, you know, yikes. Yeah. She's on to something, right? She knows, but just the very accusation that this is a a victim who is making this up, who's lying. I thought, whoa, I don't know if we'd be able to do that today. You know? Well, can, I, can I just make a point about with Ruben yeah. or with Daphne? Um, like, I remember watching the movie. I'm like, there are so many people that I recognize in this movie. And then like this other person, I'm like, who is this woman? And then it didn't dawn on me until 2008 when I'm, wow. you know, 2006 when I moved to New York and I was like, and I saw Rent, and then I started doing all my research. I was like, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. Wow. So she went from Rent to Wild Things. And I'm like, mind was blown. I'm like, yes. oh, right, wow. Me, you know, 18 year old me had known what, like, who this woman was. You know? Absolutely. And, and I know. Isn't that so crazy? More. It's, it's mm. a really interesting casting choice. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It's a very white cast. So she brings in some much needed diversity, especially in, in Florida. Right? right. And um, yeah, I was reading about her that, yes, yeah, she, of course, was in the very first run of, of Rent. She was with the show before Broadway, but I believe it opened on Broadway April 96. And then she she left April 97. And then I'm sure shot this Mm -hmm. probably pretty soon after right, right? After. so yeah. yeah what a fun moment in her career for sure mm -hmm. yeah I, mm -hmm. I just wonder what she what she thought of like all this crazy stuff going on in this movie right <laughs> um, yeah i really like her but yeah i just thought that was kind of a little risque for right off the bat the cops at least she was like i think she's acting you know yeah i'd keep a real close eye on my new friends if i were you there is one line that always stands out to me in this is it when Denise Richards finally comes in and she, you know, tackles him on the bed and she goes, we did it. We screwed the bitch. And I thought that that yep. was pretty good. <laughs> um, there's uh -huh. an, there, I, I noticed an interesting edit this time around and it's right after the scene where we think um, Susie has been killed and they shoot, they shoot over to the, the Gator park or whatever that, that place is. Yeah. And um, Walter is trying on teeth. Yes. He's trying on those dentures, and that's right after she lost her teeth. So I just, I just noticed that this time, so I, I wrote it down just as something to like. Yeah, you know, to that's look at. a really good point, because I really noticed it this time, too. What do you think they were trying to say that, like, because were they trying to say anything? or like Because it's weird. There's a connection there, obviously, yes, to Susie's teeth that just were pulled out. But did we need Walter to be trying on a right, random right. person's <laughs> teeth? I don't know if it, like, makes a ton no. of sense. What do you yeah, think, Jeff? There's lots of, I think if we, if you rewatch that with like foreshadowing in mind, I think you'll start catching things. Like I, I, I wrote down like, um, uh, like in the, in the begin, first beginning scene in the auditorium when they talk about sex crimes, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, Susie gets up and she's like, I forgot what she says, but she oh, curses yeah. Kevin Bacon. And uh, it's what like, does she say she calls him a prick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not this, but this something prick and then walks out and it's like, well, you know, we didn't know at all. We thought he was always a good guy up until, you know, halfway, three quarters of the way through the movie. So, like, yeah. that's foreshadowing, right? Like, mm -hmm. he's, yeah. us, her telling us that this guy is no good for no reason. Yes. You know, I just think that there's probably a little bit more more Easter eggs like that throughout the movie. We... And, you know, you bring up a good point because, yes, that beginning is so, like, memorable. Sex, and then they're all like, ooh, and then crimes. And, like, mm. I remember that was in the trailer right in the, in the beginning. I mean, that, <laughs> that right there is, like, the movie, right? Right. But do you guys know, and 
forgive me, maybe it was said and I just am not remembering right now. Why are they even having this assembly about sex crimes? Did something happen or it's just like it's just like a mandatory like, all right, everybody, you got to know about sex crimes. Right. It's kind it's a little like, hmm, should that have come later, like after Kelly's accusation? Then they have like this thing without Sam there, you know, talking about sex crimes. It's a little right. it's a I, I understand it's to get us right into what the movie's going to be about. But I just thought it was kind of random because I don't think I had any sort of assembly about sex crimes in high school. With, with two detectives on stage with a chalkboard? I right. mean, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so something that, must have, you know, we, we, we should have known if something happened in the school, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I kind of almost wish, and I'm sure it's maybe a little too complicated, that this Davy character who has a history with some of these characters if there was something wrong with the way he died, if he died and it was a sex crime or something like, maybe that would have been a little bit more like you all heard about Davey. I don't know. I don't know if it's too on the nose or whatever, but maybe tying him into that and having the detectives there and then Nev right away gets up. Like, I, I wonder if that would have made me connect a little bit more with this kind of like secondary Davey thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's just me. Um, yeah. This time around, I did notice that they washed the Jeep with the top off, so they essentially got the entire inside of the Jeep <laughs> wet as well. I didn't notice that before. Oh, my God. Great um, catch. I did not notice that. I love that you caught that. Oh, my God. And then um, I, I just have to give a little bit of, like, a you know, the 14-year-old me, the, you know, hearing uh, Third Eye Blind again and oh, Smash yes. Mouth and the all these songs. It's, yes. it's, it's incredible. And, like, um, Why Can't We Be Friends from Smash Mouth is a little yeah. on the nose after Susie does her epic, like, finger to uh what is um denise richard says to her uh where'd you get your shoes whores for less or something yeah. but then why can't we be friends like, yeah. like, okay get it got it you know yeah, and nev campbell does great. that iconic the way that only she can flip off people because it's like yes. half the knuckles are up she's done it in scream yeah. too it's yeah, like i it's, can't even do it can't do it yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it. it's, it's very it's like a very simple like and then her tongue yeah oh my god yeah. she is just so good in this movie and it makes sense why she wanted to do this because this was like that era where like you know some of the wb stars some of the like the various tv wholesome stars wanted to kind of go get get bad like do, it, do yeah something it was her poison her. ivy right yes, her poison mm -hmm. ivy. it was totally mm -hmm. her poison ivy she's gonna blow it boom well, I wrote this down. I said, would any normal girlfriend let two teenage girls wash their boyfriend's car in the driveway? So the, the, the girlfriend, I was like, Barbara, oh, I'm just going to go um, here. Have these two girls. You can you know see through their shirts. Everything's yeah. cool. <laughs> I <laughs> like, no, that's not going to. It's you know. a fundraiser, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know, and I love because it's a fundraiser. They need him to go get his like a ticket or a coupon or coupon, whatever yeah. Yeah. to prove that they washed Mr. Lombardo's car. Yeah, I thought that too, uh, Jeff. That yeah, Barbara <laughs> is so she knows something's up. Like right off the bat, she's like, "I'm leaving, Sam," and that's when Denise gives us an iconic. So where's your hose, Mr. Lombardo? Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, she walks to that car. She knows something's up, but she goes. And then I'm like, and then later, it's actually, I mean, it's always kind of a bummer, even though I know Sam's a, a bad guy. But mm -hmm. like, you know, when he's at the club, he's obsessed with the club. Oh, we're going to the, I'm going to the club with Barbara, right? <laughs> and they won't let him in. And then in comes Barbara and her dad, Sandra's lawyer. What's his name? Tom, Tom something. Maxwell, right? I think. Some Is it Maxwell? Yeah, Barbara and I Tom think so, Maxwell. something like that. Something like that. But then, and then Barbara's there and she's like, she can't even look at him. And I'm like, well, you kind of like had an inkling of what was you, you could have. I don't know. Right. You, you shouldn't be so shocked. Right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well, you know, and also, I kept the I mean, if you look at this cast, right, it's it's Nev, it's Denise, it's Matt, it's Kevin, it's Teresa, it's Bill, Robert Wagner. Yes. I mean, big name. Right. Um, am I missing anybody else? I mean, I, I, and then they have these like this no name writer, this no name director. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like, was Kevin like, no, guys, seriously, this movie is going to be amazing. Let's yeah. all <laughs> do this movie together. Trust You're me. You're so right. I know, it, you know, right? It, it is crazy how they got all these people. I mean, Bill Murray? Like, right. I mean, really? and honestly, up until the last night, I the other night, I was like, oh my God, I forgot he was in this. Like, yeah. he, he, he's just kind of like, but he's perfect in it, you know, just. Oh, totally. Yeah, the casting is really interesting because you're right. We have very hot people of the moment. You have Kevin mm. Bacon, who, especially at this time, was just always a star. Like, he he kind of had the golden touch. You have mm -hmm. Daphne Rubin Vega. You know, it's just very – the. I'm looking up the casting director right now because I got to shout 
them out because yeah it's a very interesting group and i think the group is perfect like i would not have recast anybody right Mm -mm. Mm -mm. really i mean they look the part they are as we said they are acting for the astronauts in space it is big (laughs) right don't touch me Any. Oh, one other note I had in my in my notes from this watch. I was like, only in Florida can you skeet shoot over the inlet, like over the <laughs> oh. over the water. <laughs> right. no well, again, way. back to the the foreshadowing, right? She skeet was it skeet shooting, yeah. right? So she dies, oh, right? Yes, mm-hmm. oh yes, good good right? thinking so, like, for sure. Yeah, they um they they it was smart, like smart directing, smart writing. Uh huh. Right? Two's company, three's a crowd. Now, okay, I need to ask you guys. Now, we love this movie. We are men. We are queer men. You know, we love the 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 craziness of it. I'm going to just quickly say the casting directors are Linda Lowey, Lowey and John Brace. So good on you two. Great job. Um, now, we're men. We like the smuttiness, the sexiness and all that. Do you feel, and, and I hope, and it seems like the actors were all in on it, but especially with Denise, you know, the blue bathing suit, iconic, but I mean, we are really seeing everything through that bathing suit. Do you kind of feel like, was the camera, was the director like taking advantage of anyone? Or do you, do you feel like everyone kind of knew what they were doing? I feel like it. I mean, the, the, the length, the time that they took for her to get out of the pool and she's just mm-hmm. laying there and letting her hair drip. I mean, I feel like they were like, Denise, do this very slowly. Mm-hmm. You know, we are going to be on you for like a good five, a seven minutes. You know, like, yeah, we're going to just, just, we're going to do it again. You're going to nice and slow. I, f- you know, I think, I think they knew. Yeah. I think they all knew what was going on. Yeah. What do yeah. you, what do you think, Andrew? You agree? Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And I think that, you know, the gaze in this movie does kind of shift um, mm-hmm. towards the end. Like once Denise is kind of off, like the, the gaze kind of, really does shift to the men. I mean, then mm-hmm. all of a sudden we have Matt Dillon shirtless on the beach. Mm-hmm. We have Kevin Bacon in the shower. Yeah. Like it, it, I think it's equal opportunity smuttiness. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I think that that's, that's even, cool. you know, plussed up by the accidental, you know, penis shot that, that we get yes. um, that even wasn't supposed to be in the movie, but they kept it in. Right. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's why I wanted to ask your thoughts on this, because apparently, you know, Kevin Bacon thought it was a different angle and that, and I guess he did have a no nudity clause in his contract, which apparently Nev did too, which makes sense because she wasn't showing anything, but without giving it much thought, he did allow the director to use the shot that he looked, thought looked best. So he said, John, use whatever shots you need to do. I don't care. And so that moment of, you know, full frontal nudity was included. Why were they getting that shot if there was a no nudity clause? You know what I mean? But I guess it was just the blocking. Like maybe Matt Dillon was supposed to stand an inch to his left and he, you know, he missed the mark. Right. Mm-hmm. It's It must have just been totally accidental. But yeah, I, I hope. Well, then he went everyone... on to go show it again in Hollow Man. So it's, it's... Oh, yes. I love Hollow Man. Yes, you're so right. Can I play too? Or is it just for boys? Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about, so stay tuned. And please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye.